The average person is said to spend 15 minutes in the bathroom. Why not take advantage of that time and learn something new? Presenting the 15-minute podcast on weird facts, crazy details, and funny particulars that you'll be able to enjoy while you're taking a sh... Well, on your free time. Welcome to The Shit with Sam Butler. Welcome to another episode of The Shit Podcast. I'm your host, Sam Butler. I want to thank all you guys for joining me. Um... Uh, on this episode, episode 111, it's good to be back in the studio recording these uh, episodes for you guys. Thank you for following along. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell if you have an opportunity. This is a good time to do it uh, if you're following us on YouTube. Um, I want to thank you guys uh, for joining me this this particular episode. Uh, I felt kind of a connection to, although my particular situation is different. Uh, it is, uh, I, I am from a mixed heritage. My mom is from Mexico. My father's from the United States. Uh, my dad was uh, a U.S. citizen, American. My mom is Mexican, two different languages, two different cultures. And uh, that's what we're going to talk about. This particular person in history is Gonzalo Guerrero. Now, Guerrero, if you translate it to English, means warrior. So it's Gonzalo Warrior, which if you look at the history of last names, um, my last name is Butler. Uh, it comes from um, uh, there's a there's a couple of different uh, theories of where my last name came from. Um, some people say it came from um, uh, the Viking heritage. Um which was uh, uh, Lord Fitzwalter, uh, who was uh, the king's right-hand man. Uh, and then if you look at other, it, it says it's got a French origin from the origin of boutelier or, or bottle, which is bottler or butler. And um, uh, this was the, the person that was in charge of the wine cellar, the royal wine cellar. So it was the king's wine. And eventually we know that that, evolved to being the butler, the guy that was in charge of the house um, in service to the king. And uh, if you look at uh, a lot of um, history and the importance of the butler in the king's service, it was kind of a big deal. So that's how you get the, the last name to today's modern interpretation of a guy named Jeeves that works for rich people and takes care of their house. Well, in the very same manner, I believe this gentleman's last name actually came from his uh, abilities. Uh, and in this case, he was a warrior. Now, he was a Spanish. He was a Spanish warrior that he was a sailor and uh, he was in the Americas on the Spanish uh, uh, expeditions trying to conquer uh, a lot of the areas that we know now as um Central America and uh, the Caribbean. So uh, he's in Panama. He's with a Spanish fleet. And he makes his way. Uh, uh, he's on his way to one of the Caribbean islands. They get shipwrecked. Now, when they get shipwrecked, there's only like 20 survivors. You know, they get caught in a storm, 20 survivors. And those 20 survivors are hungry and... Um, not in very good health. Uh, you know, they just survived uh, drowning in the ocean and they're uh, foraging and looking for things to eat. And uh, they eventually get captured. They get captured by the Mayans. They ended up shipwrecking uh, in what we now know as Yucatan, which is, if you look at Mexico, it has kind of a a, a little bit of a, of a tale that kicks back up. And a lot of people from uh, the United States and also Latin America have probably gone to what we now know as Cancun. And uh, that was the area that he shipwrecked in. You know, uh, when it's all said and done, they, 10 of those guys, uh, 10 of the 20 had passed away uh, in, in their ordeal. And um, once they were captured, about eight of them were sacrificed by uh, the natives, the, the Mayans. They ended up sacrificing eight of them. And himself and another fella were uh, put into um, 
uh, service uh, as slaves. So they get captured and they get turned into slaves for the Mayans. Now, um, he, he becomes a slave and I believe eight years go by before he really starts to earn the trust of the emperor, the king, uh, which was the Mayan uh, uh, emperor at the time. Um, and I have that. It was uh, Nachacan. And so uh, he uh, he's in service to the king. What's interesting about it is that he begins to adopt uh, the native uh, religion, he begins to adopt the native way of life. He starts to pierce his ears and his lips and uh, really um, takes in the culture. It kind of reminds me of the movie Dances with Wolves, <laughs> where Kevin Costner uh, becomes a, a Native American in the process. And this is kind of similar to what happened with uh, Gonzalo. He actually uh, started adopting the Native culture. Now, uh, in this whole time, he begins to win the favor of the emperor to the point to where he gets uh, admitted to the tribe. He's still, he's still considered a slave to a certain degree, but he starts to help them strategize and helps them strategize militarily, uh, starts teaching them some of the tactics that, uh, of course, uh, the foreigners were coming uh, over with. And this is something that is seen of great value to the Mayans. So slowly but surely, he begins to win over the confidence of the king or the emperor, and he eventually marries. Uh, some historians will say he married the emperor's daughter, which in a way made him a prince. Um, and he adopts the, 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 the lifestyle, uh, marries her, and actually has children with her, has two children. And uh, some years go by, 1536, and we're talking about 1511 to 1536. So something like 25 years have gone by, and he is now a full-blown uh, Mayan. Now, as the Spaniards arrive, they've heard of this, and they actually send communication. Um, they, they want him to rejoin the Spanish military. Now, the other, the other gentleman that was with him um, got the same offer, and he ran and, and joined the Spanish and uh, got away. But uh, he said that he couldn't leave because he had a wife and he had children. They uh, made him a counter offer. They said, uh, we'll, we'll accept your wife and children if you come with us. And then he says, well, I really can't go because I'm a slave. And so it was obvious that he didn't want to go. He was happy. He had found his new family and found his new life. And, and he was happy there. And of course, this was very important because due to his input, they were able to frustrate the Spanish attempts for conquest uh, many times. And he became a very valuable uh, instrument to the Mayans. He actually uh, became a captain in their military. I don't know if there was actually a captain, uh, as per se, ranking, but he commanded troops and he was uh, fighting down in Central America to prevent the, the capture of some of the tribes. And <clears throat> he was so effective that they, they had to regroup. And it wasn't until... Uh, um, Hernan Cortes uh, came on board that he actually uh, lost his life. Um, he was uh, he was he was killed in battle. And so <clears throat> if you look at Mexico uh, right now, he's considered the father of um, of the the mixed culture or the mestizaje, as it's said in Spanish. So the mestizos, as we know in English, are generally people of indigenous backgrounds that have 
uh, European blood uh, mix. And as the reason I feel a connection with this is because I myself am, am a mixed uh, race person. And uh, of course, it, it didn't happen the same way. It, my mom was not indigenous. My mom actually uh, was uh, of that mixed heritage as well. But her mixed heritage came from from the Spanish. Uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, I would say 90% of everybody that lives in, in South America and Central America, uh, I would say, I don't know, it's a guess, 90% of those people are probably uh, not indigenous, you know? And so everybody that you meet in these countries has some sort of Spanish uh, or European mix. Uh, because if not, we'd all be Mayans or Aztecs. And of course, there's still indigenous people in Mexico, and there's hundreds of tribes and hundreds of languages that are spoken in these indigenous tribes. But this is the first guy that actually took a stand and decided to side with the Mayans. And for that reason, there's actually a tribute to him, a statue of him and his wife and his two children, which uh, they branded him as the father of el mestizaje or of the mestizo um, deal is this uncommon i don't think this is that uncommon i think that in in many cultures uh, similar situations happen i think of that movie um uh, the last samurai with tom cruise <laughs> i think that you know um that was a, a a beautiful story i don't know how true or accurate that story was uh obviously is a hollywood production so there's some d drama in there that may not be true but we see how he's uh, initially a, a soldier and he's fighting the japanese samurais and he ends up uh, uh getting injured in battle and and I believe it, the custom was that he had to be taken care of by the family of the soldier he killed. And so then he starts to adopt uh, the culture. And that's exactly what happened, um, which is which is where uh, we see a lot of the stuff that, that we watch uh, comes from somewhere. And this is a perfect example of, of that case. We see that uh, Gonzalo Guerrero is actually... Uh, a hero to a lot of us here in the Americas, but not so much in Spain. He was considered a, a renegade, uh, a traitor, a traitor to his people, a traitor to his race. And when he was questioned, um, of course, they were communicating with him. When he was questioned, they were asking him, um, they were telling him that he was a traitor. He said, well, my allegiance to my family, to my kids, to my wife surpasses any glory that I could ever get from helping Spain conquer the Americas. So that's a pretty good example. Now, his buddy um, rejoins the Spanish. And because he had been a slave for so many years uh, with uh, the Mayans, he actually becomes an interpreter for them and is able to have some sort of communication between the, the new conquerors and the tribes. Well, that's this episode of the Shit Podcast. I thought it was very interesting that this person exists, existed, and that it's part of the Mexican history. And so if you ever want, wondered, you know, um, you can look him up. There's a lot of details on this. Obviously, we can't cover all the details in the time frame that we're allowed, but this is the shit podcast and it's something interesting to talk about that you learn in 15 minutes. So with that being said, that wraps us up for this episode of the shit. I want to thank you guys once again for following the podcast in English. If you uh, are using this as a teaching tool, I want to thank you. I'm glad to be a part of it. And uh, if you want to uh, like and subscribe my ch to my channel, uh, my YouTube channel is to Amigo Sam. That's T U Amigo Sam. Uh, uh, you're welcome. And if you have any more details or any more facts, feel free to comment them. I read all the comments. I try to respond to the comments. And uh, I want to thank you guys once again for joining me on this particular episode of the shit podcast that wraps us up. Uh, we'll see you on the next one.